from a man who found the victim body just before making the gruesome discovery. He saw the defendant fleeing the scene of the crime. Order! Order in the court! Mr. Pay, the prosecution may call its witness. Yes, Your Honor. This is bad. On the day of the murder, my witness was selling newspapers at the victim's building. Please bring Mr. Frank Silverman to the stand. There's your killer. You saw him in the opening. Mr. Sowit, you sell newspaper subscriptions, is this correct? Oh, oh yes, newspapers, yes. Mr. Sowit, you may proceed with your testimony. Please tell the court what you saw on the day of the murder. Here we go. Most, most important part of the trial is the testimony. I was going door to door selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it strange, I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her lying there, a woman, not moving, dead. I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. The man who ran was, without a doubt, the defendant sitting right over there. Hmm. Larry, why didn't you tell the truth? I can't defend you against a testimony like that. Incidentally, why wasn't the phone in the victim's apartment working? Your Honor, at the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Aren't phones supposed to work during a blackout? Yes, Your Honor. However, some cordless phones do not function normally. The phone that Mr. Sowit used was one of those. Your Honor, I have a record of the blackout for your perusal. And that gets added to the court record. No, Mr. Wright. Yes, er, yes, Your Honor. You may begin your cross-examination. Cross-examination, Your Honor? All right, right. This is it. The real deal. Uh, what exactly am I supposed to do? Why, you exposed the lies in the testimony the witness just gave. Lies? What? He was lying? Your client is innocent, right? But that witness must have lied in his testimony. Or is your client really guilty? How do I prove he's not? You hold the key. It's in the evidence. Compare the witness's testimony to the evidence at hand. There's bound to be a contradiction in there. First, find the contradictions between the court record and the witness's testimony. Then, once you've found the contradicting evidence, present it and rub it in the witness's face. Um, okay. So remember, press the witness is with the... Yeah, you press the witness with the minus button or by waving the weird remote. And then you can check your facts again with the plus button and point out contradictions. Okay, I'm not... I'm... I don't know if I'm going to press every point. Isn't that a common sight? Ugh. Sorry about that. Like he was mad and yet frightened at the same time. A criminal fleeing the scene of a crime. Refrain from conjecture. Of course, what the witness means is that the man he saw looked suspicious. So what happened next? Yeah, yeah. Look inside the apartment. Let's hold it. Anyone would look inside. Why did Payne cut him off so quickly? We looked into the apartment. What happened then? Press this point! Are you sure she was dead? Well, no, I guess I wasn't. But she wasn't moving at all. And there was blood everywhere. I guess that would look fatal to anyone. and fry, unable to go inside. Press this point! You didn't touch anything in the apartment. I mean, no, nothing. OK. 
Okay, what happened next? Got to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. Yep. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. Pres yep. Present evidence. Evidence would be the autopsy report. You found the body at 1 p.m. You're sure? Yes, it was 1 p.m. for certain. Frankly, I find that hard to believe. Your statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. The autopsy notes the time of death at some time after 4 p.m. There was nobody to... er, no, body to find at 1 p.m. How do you explain this three-hour gap? Oh, that. Oh, um... This is trivial! The witness merely forgot the time! After his testimony, I find that hard to believe. Mr. Sawit, why were you so certain that you found the body at 1 p.m.? I, uh, well, uh, 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 that's a really good question. Great job, right? Wait, put him on the spot. That's all you have to do. Point out contradictions. Lies always beget more lies. See through one, and your whole story falls apart. Wait, I remember now. Would you care to give your testimony again? All right, second testimony. The time of discovery. You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. Oh, but it was three hours off, wasn't it? I guess the victim must have been watching a video of the tape program. That's why I thought it was 1 p.m. That is utter bullshit! And I will show you how that is utter bullshit. May cross examine the witness. Here we go. Okay. Heard the time. It's probably coming from the television. Present evidence of the blackout record. Hold it right there. The prosecution has said there was a blackout at the time of the discovery. And this record proves it. You couldn't have heard a television or a video. God, I, well, er, the defense has a point. Do you have an explanation for this, Mr. Sowit? No, I, I find it quite puzzling myself. Quite. Ah, well, wait, I remember now. Mr. Selwyn, the court would prefer to hear an accurate testimony from the very beginning. These constant corrections are harming your credibility. That and you seem rather... distraught. My apologies, Your Honor. It er, must have been the shock of finding the body. Very well, Mr. Selwyn. Let's hear your testimony once more, please. Alright, third testimony. Hearing the time. Actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it. There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. That must have been what I saw. You saw a clock? I guess that would explain it. The defense may cross-examine the witness. I find a problem with that testimony. You saw it. There was a table clock in the apartment. Press this point. I think, at this point, you present statue. Wait just a moment. The murder weapon wasn't a clock, it was the statue. Now, how is this supposed to be a clock? Cornered! You with your objections and your evidence, just what do you think you are? I'm a lawyer, motherfucker. Just answer the question, Mr. Sowit. Hey, I... I saw it there, okay? That's a clock! Your Honor, if I may... Yes, Mr. Blanchard. 
as the witness stated, the statue is indeed a clock. The neck is a switch. We just tilt it and it says the time out loud. As it doesn't look like a clock, I submitted it as a statue. My apologies. I see. So the murder weapon was a table clock after all. Well, Mr. Wright, it appears that the witness's testimony was correct. This is a clock. Do you have any problems with this testimony? No. Hell yes I do! There was a gaping hole in the witness's testimony. The only way he could have known the weapon was a clock was to hold it in his hand. Yet the witness testified that he never entered the apartment. Clearly a contradiction. Indeed. The witness knew it was a clock because he went into the apartment. You were inside the apartment on the day of the murder. Oh yeah? Prove it. Prove it I went that I went in there. I'll do better than that. I can prove you were the one who killed her. You struck her with the clock, and the shock of the blow triggered the clock's voice. That was the sound you heard. 